And we're back. Game number three of our leadoff best of three of the day. The D2L Western Challenge. It's an EG double header day as they take on Navi in the front half of it. And it's been a hell of a series so far, but uh, if we're honest, it hasn't really been competitive. It's been a lot of fun to watch, but Navi completely stomping in game one and EG returning the favor in Navi game two. So now we find ourselves in game three in the draft for the first time today, looking a little bit different as we see Navi takes away PPD's tree, as well as the Naga Siren, which has been picked both games so far by Evil Geniuses. EG going to play it safe and just take out the two most popular bands right now, especially whenever you don't have first pick in the... Um, and the Ember Spirit and, of course, the Lycan. So, Navi bouncing back with a pick of Dazzle and Bad Rider, while EG says hell with it. Artisa can, can farm a Shadow Fiend pretty good, too. I swear to God, I was going to say we're going to see Shadow Fiend this game. Mm -hmm. When I saw in my mind Naga Band out, I was like, oh, that's, it's definitely going to be a Shadow Fiend. They have Radiant to work with. Right. Artisa's, like, next best hero on, uh, you know, when the Naga's banned out. So, I swear I was going to call it. But, yeah, Shadow Fiend for Artisa most likely. As Darkseer picked up quickly here for Universe, most likely as well. And then, yeah, uh, it's just kind of interesting that Navi's um, wanting first pick. And, and they're just picking what seems to be not traditional first pick-esque type of heroes like Dazzle and AA. I know AA is definitely very popular, but not like... It's not like make or break. I got my I got my Lycan or Ember like I talked about last game. Right. So kind of kind of interesting that they they, they must really value the dazzle as before. Actually, I think they banded out twice in the first two banning phases of the last two games. So they have now the dazzle to work with. So I'm interested to see how Navi utilizes it. Yeah, Dazzle's another one of those heroes that just kind of fits into whatever you want to do. Um, he he's a very good team fight hero. They do have Dire, which means they're going to be able to use Weave to take Rosham. Yeah, um, very early on, if they're given the opportunity. He can push, he can defend, he can do whatever you need. EG's actually going to grab a Nyx Assassin um, very early on um, in that third position. Well, it's not very early on, but I, I guess it kind of comes as a surprise because you already see the Darkseer, and the Nyx at this point is predominantly played as an off laner as opposed to a support, but with the Darkseer out, you would imagine Universe is going to want a solo lane all to his lonesome, and Shadow Fiend, as mentioned, likely to wind up mid, so... Um, kind of a throwback, but Nyx can be very, very strong uh, roaming out of that position. But the Nyx makes sense for, I mean, just for the bad rider for no other reason, right. just having Carapace. So even if you do have to run him as a support, it's still going to be a justified pick regardless of what level and his early farm is going to be. You're going to find some use for him. This next pick is very important from Navi, and I think this is why they're taking a lot of time. Because right now, it's still open... The chance is still open for an aggressive trialing from Navi, right. but they don't. They had they haven't seen the ex the other support from EG because if I get to, like Nyx is a pretty weak support in lane, and that's why the, Navi's probably taking so much time with this last pick or this third pick, I should say. Seconds. They're trying to make the, the conscious decision or maybe keep it the option open as to whether they can go aggro or not. Uh, they might just pick a core here, something safe. Like they're they're running out of a lot of time. Yep. Okay, so it's going to be a chance. So most likely that was like the last second, by the way. So. Yep. Looks like Puppy is kind of a little out of sorts with, uh, you know, as far as not deciding quite quickly what he wants um, with a very, very last pick or last second pick there of Chen. So, yeah, again, most likely because of that Chen going to be a safe lane tri lane or pseudo tri lane with the Chen. Yeah. And uh, yeah. No, I think you're right. And I, I definitely would agree with you that um, the conversation probably had to revolve around what they were going to do. So far as any aggressive potential, as you said, the Nyx Assassin, not a particularly strong support in lane whenever he comes under aggression. I mean, level one impale is garbage. Um, and even level two, eh, at best. So um, you definitely have a window of opportunity to abuse that. And it looks like Navi instead wanting to just play it safe and the bat going to be doing his own thing most likely out in that off lane. So Navi's still looking for heroes for both Dindy as well as Havos, at least ostensibly, one would imagine, with uh, Funnick handling the Bad Rider in the offlane. EG, though, is looking for another core as well. They've got their offlaner in their mid. At least that's what one would imagine they have. And could be looking to pick a hard farmer. Nope, they're just going to go right back to what worked for them in Game 2. PPD will be back on the Crystal Maiden. I think this is a really good pickup for a number of reasons. One, the uh, their heroes are going to benefit highly from that aura. Like, Darkseer is definitely going to benefit from the aura in the laning phase. Um, Nyx Assassin especially is going to benefit from it, and well, obviously everyone's going to. Not to mention the uh, you can trap the creeps from Chen as well, so kind of makes one of those creeps useless early on. So I, not to mention CM's just a premier support Ten hero, and PBD plays it nicely, and also gives good of um, a good Five chance to roll mid on the whoever on the hero whoever that might be. Yeah. So if you're able to get some slows and snares onto the mid hero, it's 
easy for Shadow Fiend to set up some double raises and get some nice kills that way. But um, Life Steal that picked up here, very interesting Ballsy. because you're Ballsy. yeah, very interesting because you're up against a as as far as laning goes, the Dark Seer. But if they're able to get him to pop his um, his surge early on, they can maybe not a kill. But I I don't imagine Universe will die up in that lane. That's not a very high kill lane. The Dazzle Life Stealer Chen. So uh, I, I think the, the life steal is just mainly for it's actually good against the, the rest of the heroes. Honestly, it's good against Shadow Fiend. Um, it, if you get like you know an early basher up on Nick uh, to the Nakes, right. it's good against the Nick's assassin. It's good against CM. So it's not the not the worst pickup honestly against those three heroes. As far as the laning phase go, that's what I'm worried about primarily for Navi. That's how I feel as well. Um, like when it, you know the life stealer pickup's fine. You're going to have a chin. Um, and that's going to be able to buy him some space at the very least. Just because when there's a chin on the board, especially one as legendary, literally legendary, as Puppy's chin, you just have to constantly be be wary of where he's going. Is he going to pop out in lane and try to gank the, uh, the Darkseer? Is he going to pop out um, after a long-distance map smoke into your own jungle and do something? You know, it's almost impossible to tell. And Puppy's as crafty a chin player as you're going to run into. So he'll be there to make some space. But it's really when the laning Navi phase starts to break down, or if Navi manages, or if uh, EG manages to take an early fight, and it doesn't, I'm not talking like a huge swing, but if they manage to just kind of knock the wind out of Navi and maybe get a tower or two down early to just shrink the map and the influence that a Chin can have, I feel like that life stealer is going to be way out on a way out on a boat by himself. Basically, he's going to be way out um, by himself. And I actually find it very interesting the way EG chose to do this. They ban out the sniper which Navi has been running Dindy on for quite some time. We've seen it a couple of times here in D2 Elf Lay. Mm -hmm. And then they pick the Storm Spirit themselves just to guarantee that Navi can't get their hands on it. Also an excellent tool to deal with heroes like Bad Rider with the lasso. If, you, if you're very quick, uh, you can vortex a Bad Rider who's trying to move away uh, with one of your teammates, at, at least the, before BKBs come out. But also a way to jump on the chin and so on. And up, uh, hello, Dindy Pudge. So that'll be fun, if nothing else. And... I, I like it, Navi. Thank you. It's it's been a while. It's been too long since I've been able to cast a Dendi Pudge. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. I, I I love seeing me some Dendi Pudge and just Pudge in general. I fear. Okay, I feel like this could go two different ways for Navi. They could get yep. some good creeps on Chen early on, and they could smoke early on before EG does onto SF mid and just completely shit on RTZ. or. The, the reverse happens. You don't get good creeps on Chan. You try to go for kills on Darkseer that are just not accessible. And then Crystal Maiden comes and robes Pudge with, you know, a haste rune coming out on a Nyx as well. And then Storm Spirit gets free farm and just rolls over them. So it's, I don't know. This is very, this is ballsy from Navi, but that's what Navi's all about. It's just kind of throwing it all on the table and hoping for the best. Game three <laughs> now underway as the teams begin to move out. But uh, very early. Uh, taking a look at, at just the way that Navi has drafted this, I think you're dead on the money. I think it's Puppy's going to be very active, and he needs to be very active against EG. Uh, EG certainly has the tools to deal with Navi's lineup if Dindy is held down at all. They've got great roaming potential, even though the Nyx Assassin isn't fantastic as a laner, um, at least not as good as he is in, uh, in the off lane. I mean, he can still be very effective. There's a reason why teams ran him there for as long as they did. It's not as if he's terrible. And uh, in terms of roaming supports with the Crystal Maiden, he'll be very effective. Wow, this life stealer set looks awesome too. Look at that. <laughs> I've never seen that. Yep. University's reluctant to place in the ward right in the normal spot. I'm wonder if I'm wondering if he'll place it just to see the rune. Looks like he's gonna, yeah, turn around and maybe go place it at the top rune or something. So I'm not gonna have the vision in, in the that weird part of the jungle right there, but nonetheless we'll still have some rune vision. Because um, PPD placed this other ward in the in the lane. So they want to be able to see this bat as much as possible. Funic, though, all the way down here with the early Firefly is creating a nice path for himself. Did you see if he was spotted? I wasn't looking down here. I don't think so. I, I don't think he was spotted. I think this is just for him to hang out and stay safe. And um, he can kind of juke behind and all this fun stuff. But, you know, where the creeps are going to end up meeting is going to be right about the here. And that's just perfect position for him to sit and leech XP for free. And then if things go crooked, he can just fly off to the side of the map. No problem. So horn blows and the lanes take shape. Navi will be making, Puppy will be making his way into lane up at top. We see Avos has actually found himself an invis that was spotted by Universe, so he's not going to be uh, coming too far out until he sees Avos come into lane to last hit Kuro. I'll be joining him in the tri-lane on the Dazzle. Dindy, of course, on his super sick punch set. 
here in mid. And I, I love the, the little mini dindy, by the way. Yep, you see him hanging right there off the back of him. But hold that thought. Phonic's been spotted. Zai's got eyes on him. Mason right there with him. They're both just level one, though. And just look at this. How, how clever this is. Phonic just cutting that path and very easily makes it back to safety. No problem. Yeah, I don't imagine he'll get too much, though. Level one mana burn here for, for Zai. And that kind of says to Phonic that he's not going to be in too much of harm's way. So, yeah, that'll be interesting lane. PPD's just gone straight to the jungle. I think that's the best decision for him. They don't really have much kill potential on a Boots first Bat Rider. And already an early smoke with a great creep here, the Dark Troll Summoner here for Puppy. Unfortunately, this lane is kind of pushed up a little too far for his liking, so they're going to have to wait a little bit longer. And Arteezy, uh, they might miss a kill here, unfortunately. He I... needs to block, yeah, Denny needs to block this wave, and even then it's going to be kind of far up. Arteezy's going to have to play really, really far up. Yep, they're going to go. Oh, he took a step, and they get the net off. Dindy's right there. There's the hook. There it is. The rot to follow it up. A little bit of right click, and Arteezy drops for first blood. And this is what we knew was going to be necessary. Hang on down to bottom. We can actually see Funnick being very aggressive, getting some stacks up on uh, Zion Mason and doing a little bit of burn damage while PPD just does his thing in the jungle, stacking, pulling, and whatnot. But anyway... Um, just, yeah, this is what Navi's lineup needs is just a little bit of space to get ahead. A little bit of time to get Pudge, you know, online with whatever items he wants. Uh, make sure Havos is able to farm very um, consistently up at top. And just try to hold down, especially Arteezy. And they're going to be able to continue to do that, too. It's just so hard to account for it. And Puppy just so damn good on Chin. Yeah, and people don't account sometimes that how much of a snowball hero Pudge can be if he gets an early start. Yep. So if you, if you gank early on for a Pudge and that Pudge player is good, which Dendi is, it could be very, very devastating in the mid game. Like, it starts to become very, very scary if you start landing these level 4 hooks. That was a level 1 hook, by the way, in mid. That was like maximum range, so very well played by Dendi and Puppy. See, Dendi's already level 4.5. He's a full level ahead of Arteezy off of that kill. And just getting him active and around the map is going to matter a lot. And that's one issue that they're going to have to cope with is when you look at their heroes, they do have some some things that are going to help them against the hooks. I mean, you're going to have Zai with Carapace. That's nice. If he's very quick on the trigger, Universe with Surge can be a tough target to hit. Of course, Mason with Ball Lightning, he can be a tough target to hit. But PVD is going to be very appetizing target. More importantly, Arteezy is going to, be, is going to have problems off of the Pudge and uh, off of the LS in particular, so long as they're, they're able to get a lasso on him early, if they're able to, to delay his BKBs. But uh, Zai not wasting any time coming to already help Arteezy out with the stacking and make sure that every minute that's not spent right down in the river last hitting is going, still going to be productive uh, for their young prodigy. Yeah, the only problem is they got a really crappy spawn. Like, mud golems are pretty bad. Honestly, the wolves are pretty bad early on for Shadowfiend as well. They don't give that much gold. They give good experience, but not that much gold. And yeah, he is not showing his face at all because haste rune on, on Pudge is like certain death. Certain death for a hero that has no escape mechanisms and doesn't have boots yet. So I will say, as you mentioned, and, and very rightly so, that Nyx is actually very, very good against uh, Pudge. And oh, here comes the TP rotation on the bottom. They want to kill Mason before he hits level six. Yep. Haste rune popped. And Dindy getting into position. Mason. Wow. Oh, no. Juked him. And Phonic was there to help, but has no mana. And that was actually just kind of a weird shot from Dindy. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, uh, he was he had a stack of sticky napalm on him, too. So up atop, though, we are going to have Universe engage upon Poison Touch to follow it up. A regen was bottled by Dindy on his way back to lane. So not only does he manage to apply some pressure, he did manage to find another rune on his way back. But Universe able to dodge a kill at top as well. So even though Na'Vi got first blood, they're having trouble finding more kills now that we're into the... Uh, latter stages of the early game. Yeah, unfortunately, though, I feel like he could have, if not just missed the, or just gone for the hook, maybe just kind of dove Mason a little bit. Mason was only level four, so his damage output wasn't that high. Um, Dendi, unfortunately, he's throwing out a lot of hooks, but obviously you miss every hook you don't take. So, And he has a regen rune, so I think it's okay to be liberal with your hooks at this point. Miss every hook you don't take. Is that Michael Scott? Um, <laughs> so office fans will get that. But... Yeah. Uh, Anyway, Havost just continuing to farm away. He's number two in CS. Mason's actually doing extremely well, though. He's sitting at 31 CS at five minutes in. And uh, given it has been a bad end, they did get disrupted a bit by Dindy coming down in the lane. That's really not too bad at all. And it's going to be a Midas coming out on Havost. He's already got up the recipe, now just tucking 
a few hundred gold extra away for the Glove of Hay, so they're going to be looking to play this long game. Arteezy's probably going to be in the same boat. Let's see, what's he have on the way? Nope, just his bottle, so Arteezy's actually quite far behind that pace set by Havost. Yeah, Midas is really good specifically in this lane because you can just Midas the Iron Shield creep, and it really deters the effectiveness of, uh, of Darkseer in this lane. Not to mention, this is a hard lane, honestly, for any melee hero, so luckily for Havost, he has the Feast to give him some extra, some extra HP back. And it's actually, he's going for a 1-2-2 two, two kind of build, so... This is just simply because he's taking too much damage from the Iron Shell, and he actually popped his Midas right away, just wants to get that golden experience very, very quickly. There's a very aggressive smoke coming around as they're searching for, for Arteezy, who's been jungling. They're pinging out Zai, they know he's behind this Tier 1, but Arteezy has been a little elusive here, and he's gonna miss this, this, uh, this gank. Zai, spotted out, and hooked! Dindy hits it from the high ground, very quick on the Carapace, though. Could buy some time. Funnick's going to be there to help things out. And yeah, Universe unable to get there anytime soon to help. But that's something they're going to have to contend with. Um, it didn't make a difference there, but, you know, EG has some tools that are going to make the hooks a little less effective and a little bit harder to make effective. So, nonetheless, though, it's two to nothing. Navi out to a good early lead. And you can see by efficiency, they're actually leading in gold. The experience, though, is in favor of EG. Yeah. Um,. Uh, it's really going to come down to Mason. It's a very, very good hero for situations like this. The only problem, the only thing I fear is if you get a lot of gold and farm, or sorry, gold and experience up on the puppy, um, if you get mech and the heal coming out, I feel like it's going to really reduce the effectiveness of Storm Spirit. Because in Storm, and then he has creeps uh, in his arsenal too. Here comes another smoke, as uh, they might do something here in mid. They might find Arteezy too. Yeah, they're going to find Arteezy. Up spotted point blank. They're going to get that one for free, and they're going to get a kill on PPD if they clear out. Dindy thought about throwing the hook. Here comes Mason to re-engage, though. Puppy and Kuro in trouble. There's the shadow wave to help things out. Mason bouncing around. Great grave on the Kuro. And somehow they all three survived. Funnick was there to try to help out as well. Everyone walks oh, no. away, and PPD ends up dying under his own tower. Very well played out of Kuro there in particular. There's going to be a hook that's off the mark that time. Universe... Making his way over, Arteezy's back up has just gone tread, so we'll be skipping a Midas build this time, or if he does get it, it'll be coming out much later than we're accustomed to seeing it come out for him. But that was unbelievably well managed by Na'Vi. The fact that they kept everyone up and standing there, and Kuro in particular, well placed Shadow Wave, and the Shallow Grave on himself to keep himself alive when he realized he was the priority target. Just really solid stuff across the board, and Na'Vi back at it again. What, Dindy has an invis, that's a dead Zai, or a dead Arteezy, they're gonna go on Arteezy, there you go, Rot, and Dindy has the ultimate, didn't even feel like he needed to use it, there's a poison touch to follow it, Stomp is there as well, Dindy, right click but not down, and here comes Mason, he actually guessed wrong, does manage to follow it up though, Kuro, graving himself, Puppy's gonna be able to make it away, and Mason there to help get a return kill. So EG finally makes their way onto the board, but not before Arteezy dies again. That in and of itself is a pretty big fact, and this whole time, Havos is just farming right in the face of Universe. Yeah, that's the difference, is Havos is farming where his Storm Spirit has to come help them. And even in that first engagement that he came to help, it was totally unsuccessful, and he, he ended up dying as a result. And this is all before Chen hits level 6, which Chen j did just hit level 6, and now has his global heal, which is massive. Because when he has creeps in front of him too, and Storm Spirit goes in, it, it really makes Storm Spirit quite useless. Here comes an early blink on the Phonic. Gonna get a lasso onto Universe. That is a very nice timing of a blink for Phonic. And that, is, that's really bad for EG. Yep. Losing Universe, delaying the one hero who, to this point, had seemed to be at least holding ground. And don't know if he bought anything before he ended up dropping there. Nope, nothing on the courier, nothing in his stash. So at nine minutes in... The universe can lay claim to every bit of a soul ring and a set of brown boots. Still in very good shape, though. He's number two in overall CS. Arteezy, despite dying twice, is sitting not too far off the pace either at 51 CS for himself. We look at the net worth, though. We can see Pudge is actually in third position right there with Mason while Havos is opening up a huge gap, almost up to 1,700 ahead of Arteezy at this point. Yeah, there is a sentry place down here. It actually is in range, but they don't have the uphill vision. They're pinging it out, though, so they, they do see it because it just hit daytime. He's trying to counter ward it, and he will get it if he doesn't miss any more times. Can he get it? Can he get it? It's actually denied. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder Cheeky if he gets pulled for that, by the way. I don't think so. All right, here we go. PPD and Zyre on the high ground. Here comes Funnick. Lasso's not up, but it does have Blink. 
PPD gonna die for free. And yeah. Navi is just they're running around as four, and EG, even as five, seems like they're having trouble stopping them. Um what I worry is going to happen. The the timing of this has just been brilliant out of Navi. After those two deaths, Arteezy had to abandon the idea of a Midas and instead just went straight up Treads bottom in one shot. But because they were able to keep that Midas off the board, this means he has to start fighting instead of playing typical Arteezy style. If he's going to go Treads, basically Navi's just going to continue to get more and more out of hand with Havos having the lead he does, and he doesn't have a Midas while Havos does. So they have to turn this around basically by brute force. They're not going to be able to rat this out very effectively, I don't think. Yeah, this is such a beautiful draw. Like, Okay, the only problem with Navi's draft, as we mentioned, was the laning phase. They needed right. to get out of the laning phase. And Puppy did exactly what I thought would be the best thing for them, is get a good creep and go mid immediately. And that's exactly what he did. He found the Trapper, or the Dark Soul Trumpet, or whatever it's called, Dark Troll Summoner. There you go. And went mid, smoked it up right away. Blink now uh, acquired by Dandy very early on. And the thing is, is these pushes are so good against Nyx and Storm Spirit in particular. Oh! Puppy comes up to Arteezy! Arteezy once again! Dindy went fishing and found himself a big old trout as Arteezy drops again. And that's going to be his fourth death in this game. He's died three times to Pudge Ganks and once to Puppy coming into mid. This is a disaster for him. The fact that he's anywhere near on pace after four deaths is pretty astonishing, but he is falling quickly. He's now at about half the overall farm of Havos, who is just going to town in top lane, has yet to move. Just brilliantly played and by Navi and yeah, outside of the laning phase, this draft was just a was brilliant by Puppy. I really really like it and now he's got three creeps up. He's level seven. Mech I'm sure is coming online. We also didn't even talk about the grave coming out from Kuroki as you mentioned it. We saw that one time. Here's a double smoke or invis coming out mid. Dendi could be in trouble. Yep, vortex back. That's actually just a heads up play. Um, Dendi was on an invis rune and Zai was vendetted and I'm not even sure who dropped that. Uh, but somebody, basically someone from EG said Dindy's going to be here. And they dropped it and there he was. So a free one there that's very desperately needed by them. And this will buy them a little bit of time as Navi has to reset. We'll see if they want to push a tier two. Doesn't look like it's going to be the case though. Mason is more than likely going to be going straight for his Orchid. And Orchid would be kind of a big deal here. If they're able to jump on Puppy, like you said. If he's going to go straight mech and then uh, Hand of God, which is going to be the call as the buck was already up and he has enough for the headdress, so only about 900 gold away from being able to finish the mech. Being able to work at him and bring him down in these fights would be a huge, huge deal. And that's going to that's gonna have to be what the plan is. Just avoid hooks and and uh, try to get Mason farmed and let Arteezy catch up. Thonic's yeah. been sitting up here for a long time. He has been baiting uh, Havost for quite some time. PPD pinged it out earlier. And hopefully Funnick doesn't leave because here comes the aggression from EG. They want to kill Havos, but the thing about Havos is this hero is not easy to kill. No. As you see Arteezy actually up there, raising past the tier 2. What are oh, you doing up there? Oh, Teezy. Yep. Oh, no. Put he's on the high ground. The yep. And he's going to die. He's going to burn to death. Uh, what was he doing up there? Desperation is the only word that comes to mind. Havos is going to be engaged upon by EG, though. This is a nice counter pick. And they are going to be able to bring him uh, down. The hand of God was there from Puppy, but still just not enough. Everyone from EG, save for Arteezy, was there. But as good as that is, I mean, it's great, but Arteezy died for free. Like, you just can't have that. Yeah, but that's a good kill because that actually gives hope to EG because that was the one thing I was afraid of. No, like... They have a lot of aggression coming out from an AV, the hooks coming out from a Dendi, lots of kill potential. But then in the back of EG's mind, it's like, God, we have all this to worry about, but then we can't even kill Lifestealer because he's just so tanky and has rage. But they were able to get a kill, so it actually does give some hope to EG, I think. At least mentally. <laughs> just look at the way that EG had to go about this. They know, by the way, that Havost is down and that it's just four from Na'Vi. They could have potentially come and collapsed this way and tried to make something happen, but they had to go all the way around just living in mortal fear of the Pudge and not allowing him any shot at grabbing a hook. But uh, like you said, the blink is done on Dindy. His mobility through the roof, and we'll see where he wants to go next to find his next target. Puppy should have the mech done very soon. Yeah, the headdress is already on the way to him. And another 500 gold, and he'll have the full mech complete. But, you know, if there is one bright spot for EG, it's that Na'Vi doesn't really have a team composition that's going to allow them to just sit back and, 
and like take it easy. They have to constantly right. spend time in EG's side of the map. They have to constantly be in their jungle, constantly pressure them. And when you play that way, you can be open to more mistakes than usual because you're not having a breather. You're not having a moment to reset and get yourself in the in the optimum position. But looks like EG doesn't really care. They think the optimum position is Radiant top lane, and the death attack. of the tier one could be the result. Yeah, if one person TP's up here, they they are dead. Like. They're very, very dead. So, EG, they're ready for this TP. They're baiting behind Universe. Or sitting behind Universe, I should say. Zai, he's actually used the Vendetta, gone behind this tower. But uh, looks like Navi's just waiting, and they're actually walking up there instead of TPing. Dendi, he's TPing in now. Multiple TPs. Here we go. They're going to try to engage behind the fight. We're going to here. Yep, here comes Funnick into the back of the fight. The rest are going to chase out. Dendi's there, grabbed by Mason. And under... His own tower. Here's Funnick, though, to help. Oh, great vacuum out of Universe. Drops the wall, and Funnick's going to end up dead through PPD's ultimate. And the nice engagement. But Havos was able to chase down Funnick, or excuse me, chase down RTC behind that. Universe now on the run. PPD's going to try to TP away. So is Mason. Can they find anyone? They're going to find. Nope. Universe may be the only one. One swipe. Walked right oh. past them, and they all get away. The only. They, but the sad thing is, at the end of that, at the end of that engagement. They got Dindy and they got Funnick, two great kills, but they had to give up Arteezy again to do it. And Arteezy just keeps falling further and further in terms of overall net worth. And on some heroes, it wouldn't matter as much. On a Shadow Fiend, you are completely reliant on items. You have to have both your defensive and your offensive items up to feel effective. And Havos is just getting bigger and bigger, now up to 9,200 overall net worth. So EG... Decent trade there, but they got to keep RTZ alive. They can't keep giving him away. Yeah, and the thing is, is I don't think that, that Shadow Fiend is that great against Nakes or Lifestealer unless you get a ton of farm early. Because right now, Nakes can just uh, open wounds him, press Rage, and just right-click him to death. And RTZ can't do anything. He can't raise him. He has no auto attack damage. It does any significant amount of damage at this time. Um, that that trade though, I think EG will be fine with. Oh, here comes another death possibly onto RTZ. RTZ caught, hand of God's deployed. Let's see if they can catch him. Dindy could end up. Yep, is gonna end up dropping. No, they got him from behind. It was actually Pudge. Not even sure how he got him. There's a little bit of a weird visual bug, or not wanting to call it a bug. Just looked really odd on my screen. But nonetheless, they're gonna chase this out. And EG, Universe with a big vacuum, into an impale, they could end up getting Kuro out of it, Puppy's gonna use the mech, Hand of God still on cooldown, and they're gonna lose the gem, so that was weird. Navi decided to pursue out an entire team, as Funnick continues to try and be a nuisance, he's actually doing good damage to Universe, here comes PPD and Zai to help chase him away though. Has enough, uh, doesn't have enough mana for a force stat, but we'll have his blink off cooldown in two seconds as he comes back to Earth. And he will just go ahead and blink away, so... EG is actually doing a fairly phenomenal job of playing their way back into this, but again, they just keep losing RTZ. Yeah, yeah they're, they're losing RTZ all the time. It was the urn charge, too, that killed him oh, the last it? tick. And Dendi looking for a blink hook here onto RTZ. And RTZ sniffs it out. He's going to go back to top, but... Um, yeah, Navi playing a little sloppy. A little sloppy here. But that was a great double centaur... Um, I don't even know if he stomped him both times, but he just attacked Mason to death. Mm -hmm. And Mason just died to double centaurs. <laughs> <laughs> kind of unfortunate there, because it would have been an extremely good trade for EG had Mason lived there, but Mason did die. Avos in the meantime is still just farming, and yeah, he has the early Skull Basher, which is a perfect item against them. the team of EG. Really, really good item here. Bindi taking a little bit of farm, now going to go hunting for a hook. There it is! Found PPD. And they're going to re-engage on him, though. Vortex to follow. Kuro's there. Can't throw out the grave if needs be, but they get the weave down. Avos is going to come in and engage, and Universe got bashed right off the bat. There's a grave on the Dindy to keep him alive. Funnick using his lasso. Mason takes a spill as well. RTZ not going to die this time, but three of his teammates might. Hell, he may he may die. Avos is right there with him. There's the open wounds. Funnick's on the high ground. Hook from Dindy. Kill secured. And now, just like that, all the momentum that EG seemed to have recovered is dashed away by Dindy. Excellent play from Kuro, by the way. Kuro has played so good this game. Funnick being in the right place at the right time. Havos is just too large. That basher coming out at this point is a little too much to overcome. And yeah, you take a look at the net worth. This game has officially gotten away from EG. Yeah, well, it, and it's also... 
I know that this is probably happening in Twitch chat too. Like they're, they're looking at this, the numbers and they're. RTZZ's 1, 8, and 3. I'm gonna pause that as we're gonna have a fight here. Yep, here we go. Vortex on the hoof. Host Mason comes in, has no man. Another hook that's gonna grab PPD again. He's gonna be dismembered, and another death for Mason behind his own racks. The uh, racks are naked. RTZ can't do anything. Like, really, he, if he comes, yeah, this is what's gonna happen. Lassoed and gonna be blown apart. Hand of God after the ulti just to put everyone back in good shape. GG. GG. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what else you could do. Na'Vi just played that phenomenally. And by the end, by the way, Arteezy was less farmed than Kuro's Dazzle. The five position for Na'Vi had more farm than Arteezy. Not very often you're going to see a situation like that, but, you know, it's one of those things that I think EG is just going to have to, to adjust to is very good teams like Na'Vi are learning if you shut down, based on the way that they tend to draft, if you shut down Arteezy, you're going to put yourself in a position to just go berserk and out of control at the 20 and 30 minute mark. And that's exactly what Na'Vi did in uh, in these games. I mean, EG looked great in game two to force the game three, but basically the exact opposite here in game three, just a total rout by Na'Vi. Yeah, you really got to commend Puppy, honestly. I, I feel like he's the, re the biggest reason why they just stomped eg and this was a day of stomps for this series by the way stomp game one stomp game two and then the stomp this game just back and forth ping pong totally but uh puppy just like i said like the draft really depended on early movement and being able to capitalize on the lanes early on and he got that early trapper went mid immediately with the smoke and that just started it all man that started it all danny got the early first blood got the extra gold and just started to went, go ham after that got a little bit crazy in the mid game but obviously they never skipped a beat and were always one step ahead and i wanted to say too that it's easy to look at the numbers and say lol or tz feed haha <laughs> one no, nine it wasn't that at but all honestly there's there's literally nothing he could have done right. right absolutely there was maybe that one questionable death up top of the tier two where he's raising past the tier Tier 2 tower on the offense. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. was, that, that could was have been prevented. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty stupid. But other than that, there was literally nothing Arteezy could have done. So mm -hmm. I don't. I know Twitch is probably going crazy and, and flaming and everything. But against this lineup, also when you when you lose as S or when you're losing the early game as SF against a pushing style lineup with blink initiations from Bat and overfed Pudge, things like that. Yep. There's nothing you can do. You you can't raise. You don't do enough damage. You have multiple heals coming out between Dazzle and Chen. There's literally nothing he could have done. It was just kind of... I don't even know if I can call this an outdraft. I think it was just completely outplayed early on and yep. just well-played and well-initiated by Puppy in particular. Right. This and you know this is just me taking taking a shot in the dark, but I, I, this this draft and the way that it ended up playing out from EG, you ever be like playing with your friends, you know, not super serious, but you know, you go into captain's mode or whatever, and you get all these ideas at once on how you can use X hero, you know, you pick the Nyx assassin so you can, you know, screw with the bat, the bad rider. Then you, oh, Shadow Fiend's awesome. We'll farm him like hell. Then Dark Seer universe is great, and you know, it just had the feeling of one of those drafts where you, where the Gestalt wasn't there for what EG wanted to execute. You know what I mean? Like they had tools that they, that were going to be very effective in certain situations, but the moment they lost momentum, the moment that Puppy was able to gank RTZ out in, in mid. And Dindy was immediately one level ahead. From that point on, it just felt like all of those tools that EG had drafted for themselves almost didn't matter because they were never in a proper position to use them. You, you know what I'm saying? Like it, what, what, like, yeah. like one of those. It felt like one of those games where the game plan wasn't as important as we're just going to play well. We're going to go out and we're going to rotate. Whereas it felt like Navi had a very, very laser focused game plan and executed it uh, very well. And it, I mean, it was really great play across the board. Um, can't talk enough about Puppy's Chen. 5-1 by the time it was done. Havos farmed his ass off. 3-1-4 with 665 GPM in a game that only went 21 minutes. feel like Kuro uh, played a phenomenal dazzle as well. And uh, Pudge, I mean, honestly, Dinty 7-4. Like, that's not as good as it could have been. But still, he played quite well as well. Final thoughts on the series before we take a short break leading up to the second half of our doubleheader? Yeah, I just wanted to say one more thing. Also, Phonic, really, really fast blink dagger. That really mm -hmm. helped a kill on the universe that kind of made him stagnant. But uh, also, it, I didn't even think about this, but it's actually a pretty big deal. Puppy, if he does not get that Dark Troll Summoner, could have been a completely different game. For sure. It, it, it actually really does matter because if he gets like a, a Centaur, Centaur instead, right. or if he doesn't find like the right... Like, 
he doesn't get that kill onto Arteezy. Yep. No, no, no doubt about it. So it a little bit of luck involved, but obviously you you play with what you get and you and you roll with it. Maybe he doesn't get that, and he tries to kill you know Universe up top or something. So mm -hmm. it, it might have it, it might have definitely changed the outcome of the game. Yep, I I, I agree with you. I I think if he'd have gotten a Centaur, he just would have continued to jungle till he got the Summoner. Because against that that lineup against Arteezy and Universe both, you really need the range um, that that comes with the Summoners and that. Nonetheless, Na'Vi takes a 2-1 to one win against EG, dealing them their first loss in Western Challenge play. We got about, uh, let's take a look. It's going to be about 20 minutes, give or take, about 20, 25 minutes for our second seal. Thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast, guys. I am AC, and that's Trouf. Make sure you check us out on Twitter at AC, at A-Y-E-S-E-E, -E, and he's at Trouf Dota, at T-R-A-L-F-D-O-T-A. -A. We're going sans camera and sans studio today because, uh, yeah, we were... Getting a little sick. Probably not as sick as you guys, but we were certainly sick of the red artifacting that was taking place. So I'll be rocking a pure exploit style. Thanks again for being a, being here and uh, go watch a stream. You know, take 20 minutes, grab something to drink, something to eat, whatever. Just be back here in 25 minutes for EG versus Roxas next. Stick with us. We'll be back.